took a short break and now I would like to continue with the game. So the game so far um, that has been done is that we have some enemies and the enemies uh, have like a state machine where, you know, they will be able to like run after you. Look at that. Whoa! Which is quite difficult. <laughs> this game is quite difficult. Yeah, so now we like to give the player a bit of an advantage. Okay, by introducing a shooting mechanic. Okay, where they can be, they can shoot and destroy the opponent. So first up, okay, first up, let us go create what we need. Okay, what we need is we need a bullet. So let's find something that looks like a bullet here that can be done. Does this look like a bullet to you? Oh, this sure does look like a bullet, right? No, in fact, we might even get this to be a bullet. Right. This does look like a bullet. I'm just worried that this may be a bit too hard to see. In fact, this coin itself looks like a good bullet. Okay, how about we just use this? Right, this will be our bullet. Okay, so let's uh, drag it to the scene, I guess. Okay, we just call this the bullets. Okay, and then we scale it down accordingly. Okay, so where was it? The bullets here. Okay, so we want to spawn the bullet. Okay, somewhere in front like that of the player. Okay, so in order to do that, we need to form like we need to create an MP. Or rather we could just like drag this bullet inside the player here like that. Okay, and then this will be our bullet position. Okay. So I mean I can remove the bullet over here. But the position will keep it. I'll just remove this component here. Like like that. So this oops. Uh, this bullet itself, this will be the prefab. Okay, this. Yeah, let me just since I said this will be a prefab, let's just make this a prefab. Okay, we make this a prefab so that we can use it for other things. So this is my bullets. Okay, one thing we need to do first is that we need to make sure that this bullets, okay, looks like uh, it has a collider. And. I mean, this collider will mean that whenever something touches this, it can be destroyed. So, like that. Okay, so the layer, we can set it to be default because actually we just need to set it to the layer whereby it can, it can target the enemy. So, default, oh, it doesn't, uh, default doesn't go with the enemy. Hmm. Okay, I guess in order to be safe, okay, in order to be safe, uh, we just need a layer that can interact with the enemy. I guess this enemy is in the, oh, this enemy is in layer default. Yeah, I guess it's fine. Yeah, I mean, the, the bullet can stay as a default layer. The default interacts with default. And uh, yeah, default also interacts with like, everything else I guess in this in this game so default also interacts with the platform yeah so I think it's fine yeah so let us use these bullets okay and the other thing we need to add to it is a rigid body okay so either we give a transform dot translate which translates this position or we use the physics engine and give it some velocity I prefer the velocity method so that we don't have to do the hard coded here we don't need it to have gravity okay we can actually use a kinematic okay okay just that kinematic collision is whether kinematic kinematic or kinematic static should be allowed shouldn't be an issue here because the uh oh yeah actually we we will need kinematic static to be allowed so we use full kinematic collision 
day here, we use a continuous one because the bullet is fast. Okay, we freeze the rotation. Okay, so we have a bullet like this. Let us click play and see how it how it goes. Okay, see? The bullet doesn't <laughs> it doesn't drop. Okay, so this is good. Okay, maybe the bullet I like to make it a little more flashy. Purple, how about purple bullets? Anyone in fancy purple bullets? Oh, actually this screen color is nice too. I like green bullets. Yeah, green bullets are great. You can do green bullets. Okay, uh, and then this bullet. Okay, since it's kinematic, there's no gravity. It will just be pushed forward. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to have, okay, a script. For the bullet, once the bullet is instantiated, the bullet will move forward. Okay, and what we need to do, really very, very simple, is we just have a script. Okay, uh, actually we don't need the script for the bullet. We can just instantiate it from the player itself. Okay, so, okay, what we can do right now is in the player script, okay, we have a public game object. Okay, bullet cost. Okay. And also we will need the bullet prefab also. Okay, so that we can uh, instantiate the bullet from there. So let's add the player pause. Okay, so before that let me just go and see like a transform unity. Uh sorry, no, instantiate unity to see what are the stuff that we need to do when we instantiate a game object. So we just need the object original and the transform of the parent. Okay, we are using that. So what this means is that the bullet pause, we don't need a game object, we just need a transform. Okay, a transform is a, a part of the game object that tells you the position of it. And then uh, we have a game object, which is the bullet prefab, because we need the object original. Okay, so now that we have this two, let's go back to our main um, game itself. We go to the player. Uh, we go to the player. Um, we go to the player. We use the that's my player script. Uh, there we go. The bullet position will be this one, and the bullet prefab will be this one. Okay, and then I can actually like sort of uh, delete this object. Did that kill my bullet prefab? Oh yeah, it did. So maybe the bullet prefab, we straight away grab it, grab it from the prefab itself. Yeah, okay, that, that, that should do it. So we have a bullet, and actually this player, let's, let's make it a prefab as well. Okay, and we can just grab the bullet here directly into this prefab. Okay, so all's good. Okay, we do have a player with a bullet position, and then now what we want to do is we want to instantiate the bullet. Okay, so how do we do this? So, is there a way to do the input dot get access fire? I think there is. So you go to file, like maybe build settings, player settings. You can see the input manager here. We can also have a fire. In this case, fire is fire one, left control or mouse. Okay. Okay. Now there's also here fire one. Okay, maybe, maybe, I mean, since we are doing this for the computer, okay, we just use the input dot get key down key code dot something. Okay, so this will tell you whether it's, uh, whether or not you fire. So over here, jump, fire. Let's do a fire here. Okay. And then over here, we have a void fire. Okay. We should just check if input dot get key down equal dot, I don't know, uh, fire will be F. Okay, let's see. 
dvd equal f. Yeah, I guess f stands for fire. Yeah? So if input dot get t down, input dot f, which means that if we press if we press the fire button, okay. What we need to do is then, okay, we do then instantiate, okay. And then let's see what's the instantiate code again. Let's go back to the instantiate. So instantiate object transform. So instantiate bullet prefab. And then bullet pause. Because that's where the parent is. Okay. And not just that, okay. So, well, actually, we shouldn't do it at, because if we jump later after, we actually want a vector tree position. Yeah, we don't want to put it under the transform. Okay, so what we can do is we can do bullet pause dot position because that's a transform dot position, and then we do a rotation. Okay. Bullet pause stop rotation. That that should be fine. Yeah, we do this version instead because I don't want it to be packed under the, the game object of that parent. Because later when you jump, you don't want the bullet to jump to get a view. So um that that's it. We have this here. Okay, we instantiate this one. Okay, so we can set a var bullet equals to this. Okay, we instantiate this one as bullet. As game object, actually. As game object. Yeah, because over here, this is an object. So we just set it as game object. Okay, and then bullet dot get component rigid body 2D. Okay, dot add force. Okay, or actually, not add force. We just set the velocity directly. Okay, we can also add force, but in this case, we set the velocity equals to new vector to. Okay, we only need the x velocity, fire speed, and zero. That's all. Okay, and here we set the fire fire speed here. Public float fire speed. Maybe it's like slightly faster than the moves than the walk speed. 20 yeah like that so once you press the fire button f okay and it's only get key down that means you need to lift your key it's not uh, instant fire okay so get key down is only when you press it okay there are other methods when you like can check whether the key is held okay but right now we just want to see whether the key is pressed now okay and then we set the velocity like that so we instantiate the bullet and then we set the velocity so is this able to work? All right, let's check it out whether this uh, simple idea is able to work. Yeah. Anyway, for those viewing, if you have any questions so far about what I'm doing, feel free to just type in the chat. Uh, yeah, I, I do check the chat as well. Okay, but anyway, let's go back to the bullets. Okay, it looks like there's no errors. Wow, okay, let's go back to the game. I click play right now. Okay. So I just make sure that my other functionalities are working. Okay. Let me just press F now. Oops. There's no rigid body 2D attached to the bullet flown object. Okay, let's see. Oh, I didn't have a rigid body in the bullet. Okay, let's take a look at the bullet. Is there no rigid? Oh, there isn't a rigid body. Okay, and here we do kinematic. I thought I added a rigid body. I must have deleted it. Yeah. Or it might be in the player itself and the bullet. The rigid body might. Yeah, it's there. Okay, there. Remove component for this. Yeah, so the, the, the player bullet doesn't need all this, but the bullet itself needs. Oh. Seems like the player bullet is linked to the prefab. Hmm. 
no it's not okay it's, it's not linked anymore so this i was editing the prefab directly so yeah kinematic and box collider okay let us see right now so when i press the f button the bullet is going to come flying out whoa look at that whoa, whoa, whoa. okay <laughs> that, that's pretty cool actually Okay, <laughs> it can even push me back. Look at that. Okay, so that's the second issue that we have yet to solve. Okay, the bullet itself is just going in one direction regardless of... Okay, let's see if I can jump and fire. Yeah, we can. Looks cool actually, the jump and fire. Oh, I quite like this mechanic. Okay, so the one thing that is lacking right now is... Look at that. I'm, I'm stuck inside here. It's sensing me. Oops. Okay, so uh, this is the second issue that we need to resolve is that when we have the player facing the other direction, um, the bullet should fire at the player's direction itself. So how do we do that? So we can just take the cue from here. Math F, absolute, this one. Okay, so basically if the transform direction is in the positive side, we should go forward. If not, we should go backwards. So very simple. We can just use this fire speed times this. Instead of absolute, we do mathf.sign. We should tell you the sign of the transform uh, x position. Okay, so in this case, if we fire left, the bullet should go left. If we fire right, the bullet should go right. Okay, my transform does not exist in the current context. Okay, so instead of my transform, we should just take transform.localscale.x, okay, which will exist in this context. Yeah, like this. So um, basically, it just tells you whether the current um, x direction is it positive or negative. If it's positive, we fire forward. If it's negative, we fire backwards. And that's exactly what this is. Uh, let's see whether this works. You know, it'll be quite cool to see whether we can fire both directions, forward and backward. Okay, they did say that now there's an issue with the bullet objects. Okay, let's go back to the bullet. The rigid body is there, but perhaps the player is not referencing the bullet. Okay, I'll drag this bullet here like that. And then maybe what I'll do is open prefab and just drag the bullet inside here. Okay, so if we go back to my scene itself, my player should have the updated bullet already. Let's see whether this works. Okay, so if I press F, the bullet is supposed to fly all the way out. Yes. Okay, it flies here also. So it's good that the bullet is like out of the player so that the player doesn't get affected by the bullet physics. But look at that. Ooh. <laughs> I quite like the fact that the thing is pinned to the wall. Haha, uh -huh, you cannot catch me because you are stuck. What's this guy doing? Uh, so if uh if we do things like this, see he's unable to move forward because he's uh tra sort of trapped. Yeah. So rather than have the bullet like push the thing away okay and leading to like trap situations like this uh, what we would do is perhaps just uh, make sure that i mean if you don't want this to be trapped very easy you just need to go to your uh, enemy in your rigid body continuous yeah, actually this should this should do the trick already if this rigid body is continuous it shouldn't be trapped uh, shouldn't be trapped mm. 
is my bullet continuous also in the rigid body. Let, let us see in my prefab bullet is my lowest discrete. Okay, let's just update the bullet to be continuous and see whether you know this maybe the reason why it's trapped. I'm not sure, but let's just try to see. E Oh, did I spoil something? Somehow it got trapped there, but it didn't get trapped here. <laughs> I mean, it's quite cool that you can get trapped here, but you know, this is not exactly the effect that we want. I'm guessing that when it, when it hits the box, the velocity is so great that it got pushed all the way inside here. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. All three of them are still alive at the bottom. I see the, the force of this object is so great. Right, it's it shouldn't even pass through this wall, the bullet. But I guess the force is too great until it passes through. You know, like if your bullets, what's my bullet? My bullet is the layer defaults. And okay, by right, all right, the bullet shouldn't like. Let's put the fire speed as 2 and we see how, how it is. It shouldn't be able to pass through the wall, but I think it, it's because it's too it's too fast, the bullet. Which I like the speed actually. Look at that. Whoop. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I, I like the original speed of 20. It was great. Okay, now let's just make the enemy get destroyed when they come upon contact of the bullet. Okay, how do we do this? So, very simple. Uh, we have to actually get this uh, on the bullet itself. Okay, we have to get this script on the bullet itself. So, let's create a script called bullets. Okay, and we put it in the prefab bullet so that we can control the behavior of this bullet so this is the bullet itself and i will drag the bullet script inside the prefab come on drag it come on. why can't i add it Okay, done. <laughs> I don't know why the dragging didn't work, but I added the component anyway. So in this bullet, uh, the bullet itself is a collider, it's not a trigger. We can also set a trigger, okay? But uh, I mean, collider is fine as well, okay? Uh, so that we can have some of the effects of the physics. So over here, void on collision, enter 2D. Collider 2D 
other. I think it's Collider. Okay, let's see the player. Collision is Collision 2D. Okay. Collider is for trigger. Okay. Collision 2D other. If other dot game object dot tag. Okay, if the other game object is a platform, okay, then what we'll do is we'll destroy this dot game object. We'll destroy this game object. Okay. If the other dot game object dot tag is the enemy itself, okay. Okay, so I guess regardless of uh, we, what it contacts with, this bullet is going to be destroyed. Okay, but if the other enemy is uh, other game object is is an enemy, we destroy the other game object, and then after that we destroy the bullet. Okay, as simple as that. Okay, so let's see whether this works. Okay, I'm not too sure whether it works because the enemy itself is uh, under the layer. The layer. Oh, it works. It works. Okay, so although the layer is in default, okay, and the collision layer uses layer, but the tag is enemy, so this will be fine. Now I understand, you know, why you have tag and layer, so they can do this tag method. And... Alright, let's see how it works now. Oh. Okay, um, we need to set this a little further. Because currently it's getting destroyed by the player <laughs> when upon instantiation the bullet gets destroyed instantly by the by touching the player's body. And let's see whether this works now. Okay, it still gets destroyed instantly, so it means the bullet needs to be a little further. Like that. Let's uh, apply all and let's let's see whether it works. Oh, there we go. Oh, looks pretty slick. Oh, what happened? Object reference not set to an instant of the object. Okay, so I guess what we need to do is okay, we need to put the player under the game manager, I guess. Or we need to put the singleton script on the player itself. Okay, so that there will only be one player. Let's just put the singleton script here. Or we can just put the player under singleton. Oh, but the singletons will be destroyed at the end of the... Okay, so... Uh, not a good idea in, in general. Let us just go to each scene and add a player. Alright, level 2. Okay, that's the problem. It wasn't a prefab previously. So, all this camera, I'm not too sure whether it would be. I think it's missing. Look at and follow. Uh, so this this also highlights the importance of having a prefab. Okay, if you don't have a prefab early, you see like the player here. Okay, whatever changes you make to your player initially it will not be carried over. And then your camera also. In fact, this camera can be made a prefab as well. I mean, because. Okay, for now, let's uh, just see how this looks like. So this level one. 
after you make the general mechanics of this, the rest is simply just making the, the platformer mechanics. Pew. It'd be quite cool if you know you can just shoot the shoot here and then you can use this to climb up. Yeah. <laughs> We do have many bullets that didn't get destroyed. It's still moving. Look at that. So if you want the bullet to really, really get destroyed, you need to paint more walls. Okay, now let's see whether it works. Oops, oops. Funny. That's my player. <laughs> hmm. Oh, there's an issue here. Player, the, the player is there, but the camera didn't follow it. Okay. Let's try it. Let's try here. We start with this scene two and see whether it works. So you see, this bouncy layer is not updated as well here. It's still the old bouncy layer. So yeah, I noticed that the bouncy layer is not um, not the same. So let us see in level one what we did to the bouncy layer. We basically remove, uh, we set the it to be a trigger. So we have to do the same for the rest of the levels. If not, it will be inconsistent. So we make this a trigger. Okay, and we remove the material on it. Yeah, it'll be good if I can just uh, make this grid a prefab. Maybe I should. I'm just worried that once I make it a prefab, if I update prefab, I sort of change all the level design that I've made. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that should be it. Let's try again. Let's try again. Let's try again. I, I think this, this should be... Whoops. Ah, uh, run. Okay, great. Last level is quite hard. It's hard because of the spring actually, right? The secret is not to use the spring. All right, I think that's uh, that's more or less it for the game. Quite uh, like it. Oh, look, there's a small error here. See, it starts with stage four when you restart the game. So, 
is part of the game manager code. Once you go to the next stage, you should destroy this game manager also. So let's see. I think it's in, in the scene loader itself. Okay, and then we should also destroy the game manager. Okay. So maybe we should destroy this first before we load the scene. Okay. So we, we make sure that we start fresh. Okay, so this is the, the thing that we need to do. So let's try again. I'm quite happy I recreated the platformer from scratch this time around without any tutorial which means I've you know, quite internalized uh, what the 2D course was saying already <laughs> okay so this is with uh, spikes this level teaches you spikes and this you win very good okay, so over here you win here when it comes to you win Okay, over here is still zero still stage four. But I think it's fine, yeah. I guess stage four can be like you win. And then when we restart, we go back to stage one. Awesome. Nice. Yeah, it's good to have the bullet speed faster than the, the player itself. So that the player will never hit his own, hit his own bullets. Oh, do you realize something? It passed through Okay, it looks like we need to have the platform grid Okay The collider here Rigid body, static Yeah, it can pass through that one block, that bullet. It's not supposed to pass through that one block. It's supposed to be stopped by the, the block, but apparently it is able to pass through it. Is supposed to be stopped by the platform. Apparently, it can pass through the platform entirely. It's supposed to be destroyed by the platform, so that means there's something wrong with the bullet prefect. Okay, so it depends on whether the bullet can interact with the platform, I guess. So this is under layer platform and the bullet is under layer default. So let's see. Yeah, let's see. Um physics 2D default should be able to interact with platform. It should be, yeah, it should be. Then it should destroy itself actually. Is it because I did not enable collisions with static? Yeah, it could be that. Yes, it's not using full kinematic collisions. So let's see now. Okay. Maybe that's also why. Good. Okay, good. It's now being stopped already. Okay, good. I fixed the issue of it. So it's because of the kinematic collisions part. Now you cannot pass through, and there shouldn't be any stray bullets. Very good. Okay, great. I find that this break over here is 
is a bit of an annoyance <laughs> because it's like right above the spring. Okay. And this right here is an annoyance as well because it's blocking the jump to that last platform there. So this is not a very well created level. I think the two bricks at the top should be removed. So let's just remove those books. Sorry. I think it's quite irritating, honestly. Let's go erase this thing. Okay, that was for level one. Go to level two. Active power map platform and we erase this two here. Oh, what happened to this? Okay, level three. I think level three we can probably keep it yeah. <laughs> Make it tough for the player. Level one. Okay, level one we probably shouldn't introduce the enemies, so the enemies should all go to level two. Like level one should just be a very peaceful level where people just explore and then level two can have some enemies and then level three we have the worst possible combination okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to use the enemy position here copy it. okay we can paste it in level two okay but maybe at level two we just have one enemy uh, we remove this one here this one here we remove we just have one enemy at the floor and then level three we just you know oh yeah deal with it <laughs> so level one we can de delete all the enemies all right let's see how it looks like yeah so level one is the easy one no enemies uh just to illustrate how the mechanics work and then level two will be the harder one so you see now this one you can just forever bounce here Whee! So we have one enemy for you to practice your shooting on. Yeah, I think the enemy should be under. Um, oh look, here is got an issue. The spikes are they part of the platform? Okay, so let's take a look at level three. Okay, so for the grid. The hazard itself is under layer platform. Okay, this shouldn't be the case. Okay, uh, let's put this under layer. Maybe a layer, layer hazard. update all of this actually the hazard layer uh, will just need to interact with no one except the player right so we can just go to our project settings and just edit the hazard layer will okay maybe you can interact with default as well but it will only interact with the player that's it. Yeah. So let's just play this last stage to see whether it works because this is really the only stage with okay, this level two. Level two has hazards also. They just die. Well, well. It's not build settings, it is 
project settings. Looks like the enemy layer is interacting with the hazard. Or rather, I think it's because of the default. Maybe this hazard will react with the player. I mean, this, the, this might solve the issue of the enemy going there. And the bullet can go through the hazard breaks. So there are various ways to solve the layer collision problem. One way is to change the layers. Another way is to change. There we go. Okay, so one thing I like to do is I like to make the. I like to make the enemies as. Uh, Really irritated in the last level there. Uh, it's stage 3 for a reason. <laughs> okay, so what we need to do is we need to make the enemy. I think all is, all is good. Maybe even the grid, I'll make it a prefab. Like this. Yeah, it's just that different grids will have different power maps. But as of now, I think everything is quite similar. Okay, so I wanted to make the enemies under single pens. So that if you die, you know, your enemy gets destroyed as well. So let's go to level 1. There's no enemies here. Level 3. Now the enemy should go under single pens. Okay, the grid itself. Um, Okay, see, we do have quite a significant change in the tile map for this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to destroy this thing here. I'm going to delete this. It's going to add this grid inside. Okay, we make the grid uh, prefab. And then I just want to see whether if, like, let's say I paint more hazard layers. whether it will bring over to the other scenes. Okay, so this level 3, go to level 2, okay, it didn't. Okay, we go to level 1, we delete away this grid. We add in the grid. Okay, I think this will be better. So in case you want to do anything else next time to your grid, it will all be changed. Because the grid will be changed. Okay, let's uh, remove the hazard for this. The hazard layer, just make sure. Okay, so let's say if I want to change my platform pack to bouncy. Okay, and then I override. I guess I'll need to change. Okay, let's just override this to just see how it looks like. So in scenes level two. Oh no, it took away the it took away the spikes in level two. But the layers change to bouncy in level three. So what happened here? What happened to my spikes? Okay, so maybe it wasn't a good idea after all to, to change it to prefabs. <laughs> okay, never mind. Let me just repaint this. Okay, because it did interfere with, with the other levels. So. We call this platform the platform layer now. And then we 
apply all. Go to level two and level one. Okay, now everyone will have the same spikes. Let's just update the hazard layer. Over here, and then up here, over here, we update the hazard layer as well. And it's gonna do like that. Yeah, maybe this will be good. Just one spike will do. You know what? I'm just gonna unpack prefect completely. <laughs> yeah, because it looks like once you change one, you change everything. And that's not exactly the kind of thing that we would like to have. Okay. Yeah, this was why I didn't do the prefect earlier on. Okay, because the scene changes. If you change one, it changes everything, which is not exactly that I do. Okay, let's try again. Okay, now we just make sure that the game is fine, working well. Okay, this is level one. Introduce people to the spikes. Level two, one oh, sorry, level one is just the springs and the mechanics. Level two is the spikes and the enemy. Okay. And level three. Level three will have will have the most amount of stuff. Oops, I died. Okay. And there we go. Very, very simple game. Oi. We have levels that just totally utilize the springs that will be that'll be very crazy i quite like this game now actually probably find better spikes for the enemy probably we, you can also incorporate like hidden tiles where you bang on the bottom you get something out much like super mario I mean, super mario is the trademark for this map. oh i died okay so i want to test now that once I kill the enemy, the enemy won't come back again when I die. Okay, good. It's working. So I'll just test that for the next stage. Okay, good. The enemy is under single gun. Oh, I died the last one. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's more or less the basic mechanics for, for this kind of games. And yeah, probably the next time I'll do I'll do like maybe a key and a lock mechanic for another stage. Okay, to just show you how, how to make objects appear. Maybe some hidden tiles that if I have time. Yeah, like you at the bottom, you can hit the tile and the tile appears. So how to do those kind of hidden tile mechanics. Yeah, plenty of stuff you can do for, for your game actually. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> I like the speed of this. Yeah, but you can see over here the camera here. I think I should make the camera prefab because right now okay I did configure the date zone width to be so maybe this grid I will take it out as a prefab. Okay. But the camera I will put it as a prefab. Okay, along with the main camera. Check it. Then we go to each of the scenes and we remove this tool. And then we go to the prefab and put this two in again. So this two doesn't change, you see. So I think it's fine. Follow player. Player. And we go to the last scene here. Say delete this two here. And we take these two cameras and we put it in here. And then the main camera will follow the play. Oh, no, wrong. This V cam will follow the player. Photo the player. Okay, this is so that I will, will be able to keep the date zone similar for all three of them. Yep, much better. So that once you move left a bit, you can see the enemy better. Okay, let's go to stage one. Okay, and see whether this works. Yes, it's working. Very nice. So although the confiner is no longer there, <laughs> you 
is something of an irritant. You see the, the stage confiner is no longer there, which means that the bounding shape here I need to put back again like that. And I need to do that for all the scenes. I wonder if there's a shorter way to do this. So we have the camera here and the collider will put it here. I guess if you are not doing a lot of levels, this is fine. I wonder if we could do procedural generation as well. I, maybe one day I'll just play around with the package to do procedural generation. That would be cool. It, it is actually my intention to do a roguelike game in the future. And I do hope that it succeeds. <laughs> okay, so this one looks like the Polygon Collider 2D is, is, is working here. Okay, stage 1 is working. So, it's a bit of an issue that they caught that stage 1. Okay, stage 1 is working. Stage 2. Nope, stage 2 is not working. You can see that it's just the end. And stage 3. Is stage 3 working? Okay, before I got to see whether stage 3 is working, I kind of died. <laughs> stage 3 is working. So, the only thing that's not working is stage 2. So, let's go to stage 2. Go to the camera and here you can see that confiner is not confined there. Okay, so if we run it now, I think all should be working. And I think that right now it feels like it's quite a nice platformer already. I mean, the mechanics may not be a lot. Okay, it could have puzzle mechanics and other mechanics added as well. But at least the general feel of this platformer is, is quite nice, I feel. I like this platformer. Yeah, like the enemy can chase you. Oi. Yes, I win. And yet, that would be the end for the stream today. And if you'd like to see anything else, do let me know. If not, I will probably just do like hidden breaks, key lock mechanisms in the next session, and then we'll call it a day for this platformer. A very simple three-level platformer. And yep, that'll be it. And see ya.